got to be over sickness, over sickness and disease. We got the victory. We got the victory over poverty. Over poverty. We got the victory. We got the victory over sin over and sin and shame. We got the we got the victory in Jesus' name. V victory.
give him the praise. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord.
without Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm in the right crowd. Somebody had experience. Thank you, God. And his faithful self. What has he done for you lately? Yes, God. Oh, he's good. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God is a good God, you all. You know he shows up all all the time, you know. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. All the time. All the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Nobody like him. Yes, God. Nobody like him, Lord. Often him say, but never duplicate it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody say We're blessed in the field. We're blessed. 
King and Lord of Lord. Well, come on, let's give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but he can work it out this morning. Glory to God. All our bosses are cracking and squeaking and hot, but he can work it out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to give him our best. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He 
you've been going through. You've been tired in the fire and you don't know what to do. Look to the hill who is coming down your help. As long as you got Jesus, you don't need nobody else. He can work it out. I know he can work it out. Come on, I'm a witness. He can work it out. And you really been going through You've been caught in the fire And you don't know what to do Look to the hill Who is coming down your help As long as you've got Jesus You don't need nobody else He can, he can. Work, it out. work it out I know he, he can. can Work it out, work it out. I'm a living witness He can, he can work, work it out, it out.
Yes, he can. <laughs> and yes, he will. Hallelujah. See, y'all both held up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Huh? That's true. Glory to God. Well, while you're standing, I want this young lady to come. She's been blessed to be with me. Now we're going on 40 years, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're still smiling, praise God. Sister Ann. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He can work it out, can't he? I'm a living witness. He can work it out. If you got a problem this morning, he can work it out. Glory to God. I, I just give God praise this morning. Truly, he is good. Mama Audra, he's good. And he is good all the time. Glory to God. We just got to give God our best praise. You got to praise him. Don't praise your way on out. Glory to God. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. Right now, what it looks like, you got to praise your way out. He can work it out, Felicia. He can work it out. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I want you in this building to help me welcome our internet audience. Come on, BLCC. Let's give them a BLCC welcome. Woo! Glory to God. We welcome you to our service on today. We pray that you will be blessed. I know you will be blessed by the word of God. If you've already been blessed by the music, by the praise and worship, truly God is in this place. The spirit is in this place. The spirit is in this place. Praise God. The anointing is here to destroy every yoke and also on that internet. He can work it out. I don't care what you are going through. He can work it out. Praise God. I want you in this building to look to your neighbor and tell him, girl, a man, a boy, I don't care what you're going through. Jesus can work it out. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him. He can work it out. He can work it out. He can work it out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mahalia, girl, he can work it out. In fact, it's already worked out. Hallelujah. Well, lift your hands all over the building. Praise God. Something good is going to happen to you today. Do you receive that? Come on, clap your hands and act like it then. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. I tell you, God's going to work it out. Like I told you on last Sunday, my dad would always say, I tell you, and I tell you, God is going to work it out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, these are our announcements. Children's Ministry will meet today from 5 until 6.30 p.m. Praise God. Sunday, February 15th, youth leaders, you will meet with the parents, the youth, adult participants on the Resurrection Day program to dis distribute parts, discuss expectation for rehearsals, and the meeting is scheduled immediately after service in the fellowship hall. That's next Sunday, immediately after service. And I want to remind you of the 2015, some events that will be coming up. Resurrection Day program is Sunday, March 29th. Sunday, March 29th. Founders Day celebration. Woo! Glory to God. It will be Friday, September 11th. Mark your calendars, Friday, September 11th. And we have more details to come, praise God. Listen, 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 listen for more announcements. Hallelujah. I want to remind you, you make your contributions before and after service with your debit or your credit card in our bookstore. Also, the Interfaith Care and Ministry Basic Needs, the list is posted in the bookstore as well as the fellowship hall. And as always, Pastor and I would like to thank you for being a blessing to those in need. You don't know that can that you, you donate. It's a blessing to someone, and we want to thank you for being a blessing to those people in need. Praise God. Our regular scheduled service is here at the church, 
Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Our morning worship is at 10 a.m. Every second and fourth Sundays is our children's ministry, which is today, praise God. Teens ministry will be next Tuesday. Our midweek service is Tuesday at 7 p.m., praise God. We have a Thursday noonday class. Glory to God. Thank God. And on Thursday and on Friday is the most important meeting of the week, which is prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Well, that ends our announcements. Right now, we like to meet, greet, and welcome all of our first-time visitors. If you are here for the first time, would you please stand to be recognized? All of our first-time visitors. Well, praise God. Come on, give them a BLCC welcome. Woo! Glory to God. Come on, give them some love. Give them some love. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. They're laughing because this is one of our older members. She's back visiting. This is her first time in this building. Praise God. In this building. Praise God. Praise God. Well, on behalf of Pastor Douglas and myself and the VLCC family, we would like to welcome you to our church. Praise God. This is a place of hope and victory in a difficult world for all people. We have a saying here, young ladies with those hats, girl, y'all wearing them hats. Woo! Praise God. We have a saying here, if you come through those doors for the first time, you'll never be the same. Now, Miss Johnny, girl, you'll never be the same. After today, you'll never be the same. And Vanetta, girl, you'll never be the same. Praise God. This is my old beautician. She left town. That's my old beautician. Hey, girl, I love you. Praise God. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Praise God. Praise God. If you would take that card you received, fill it out. Take it to our bookstore. We have a gift for you as a token of saying thank you for visiting with us today. Come on, everybody. Let's give God a praise for our visitors. Woo! Glory to God. Praise God. Well, I want everyone to stand to your feet. And I want you to put your hands together. And I want you to shout to the top of your voice. Come on, let's receive our pastor, Pastor Douglas. Praise God, praise God, praise God. It's good to be saved, isn't it? I, I heard about hell. And I decided I wasn't going. And I'm trying to keep you all out of that place, if you'll listen to me. And so uh, uh, I'm excited about what God is going to speak on today. Uh, welcome again to our viewers by internet. Uh, we appreciate you uh, being a part of our services on Sunday. And um, the good part about it is you can go back and listen to it again. Uh, we archive our every service on our website, and so we've been doing this now uh, since the end of 2013. And so we have people watching us far away as Australia that are faithful to this, to watch the program almost every Sunday. So uh, I give God the praise for having that type of outreach. My desire is to eventually go back on television because uh, it's, a good, it's a good avenue to reach people. It's just a matter of money. And the money just, Lord, I got the right house up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll never run out. Running out is not an option. Broke is not even computable. Doesn't even make sense to us being broke. So just a matter of timing with God. Uh, for is when the provisions show up for us to do this. And I'm not talking about no 1 a.m. in the morning slot. Hello, somebody. I want a prime time spot on a prime time station. Hallelujah. I don't want no place where ain't nobody ever heard of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God's going to give it to us. That's part of my confessions every day is television, internet, uh, radio, I make that confession every day. And I believe the word that's in this house is relevant for people of all color, all the backgrounds. And uh, it's a now word. 
It's in our word. And so I believe in God to do that because that's part of our increase, you know. Greater. greater. That's what he said this year, greater. greater. And so we're going to see God's glory in greater measures this, this year, praise God. And so God began to speak a word to me uh, on Thursday. We began to explore another aspect of this wholeness slice. And uh, we dealt with sin. And I know that, that, that never crossed your, your mind. Uh, I know no, nobody in here ever does that. Uh, but I just want to put it out there so you can tell somebody else, all right, about how this spiritual slice works with sin. And it's not what you think either. Praise the Lord. And you're going to be blessed by it, trust me. Don't get nervous. <laughs> Glory to God. You're going you're gonna to be blessed by it, praise God. So we're going to uh, uh, just... Take a moment and greet your neighbors. You that watch by the internet, we'll be back shortly. We're just going to fellowship for a minute, and then we're going to come back and get into the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Well, hello, stranger. How you?
healing. Deliverer. Signs and wonders. Miracle. Healing. Deliverer. Signs and wonders. Do you all know everybody now? Can you text them your phone number? <laughs> How you text? <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You see a little short lady out there? Tell her that, that her husband. Oh, God is so good. Let's pray. Father, you're awesome. That's the least we can say about you. You're faithful. You always come through. You are now God. You're later God. <laughs> you do it when you get ready. But you always do it. We've learned to trust your faithfulness. And trust your wisdom. You always do what you say you will do. Thank you for the privilege to come to the house of God to hear you speak. We know you have a word for the house today. And we trust the Holy Spirit to deliver the word through this vessel of clay. Father, thank you every heart that is a heart of good soil. And the word that is spoken today will not fall to the ground unfulfilled, but it said, Ye are much fruit in the lives and hearts of these your people. And we will leave this place not challenged, but changed in your presence. Holy Spirit, as always, I stand before you as a barefooted priest. Whatever you want to say today, I will quote heaven. I will say exactly what you want me to say. All I ask, you do one thing to put your promise, confirm your word. And Lord, make thyself known in this house today by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And we're going to praise in advance for everything about to see right now by your spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Galatians. We've been coming out of the book of Romans, chapter 8, doing this study on whole economics. The word said, Jesus Christ maketh us every with whole. And he told us, he showed me in the word, he said, you know, everything is about whole. And he, then he gave me these five slices of the whole economics, which is uh, spiritual, physically, um, uh, socially, mo emotionally, and is, is one of them. One other one. Materially, yes. Five slices. But the foundational slice is the spiritual slice. Because the spiritual slice has to do with the foundation. You would not be born again without the Holy Ghost. He's the one that recreated us uh, inside. And then he housed himself in us. Every person that is truly born again, T-R-U, you are you. <laughs> truly. L-Y, truly born again, has the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you as a way of life. You are never absent from the presence of the Holy Spirit because he, he created the container and then he filled the container with himself. Jesus said when he come, he will, he will abide with you and in you forever. So you are never without the Holy Spirit. He is the one that God sent in the place of Jesus. And his job is to see to it that we come into the full knowledge, the full knowledge, the full knowledge of what he has given to us. God has given us great and mighty things. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says in verse 9, it says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that do what? Love him. Qualification is love. He said, but, verse 10 said, but they have been revealed unto us by his spirit. So you can't even have a clue about this new kingdom, the kingdom of God, without the Holy Spirit. And then you can't see it without being born again. John 3 and 3 said, Jesus, Nicodemus came to Jesus by, by night. And say, he said, you know, what must I do to, to, to inherit, you know, uh, uh, eternal life? And he said, 
uh, 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 what, what he said, uh, uh, I know you came from God. So can nobody do what you're doing except, you know, God does it through him. And in verse 3, Jesus answered and said, but you can't even see the kingdom unless you're born again. The kingdom could be passing right by you and you never see it without the Holy Spirit. His job is to expose God to us. People always say, you know, God, God hides stuff from us. You know, not, that, that's, that, is not, that, is not, that is not that is not scripture. God is about revelation. He wants us to know about him. The Bible says, uh, uh, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God or from God. And look what the purpose was. So that, so that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Doesn't sound like God trying to hide anything from us. He wants us to know what he's given us. And one verse says in the book of 1 First, First Peter, he said he has given us all things that pertain to life. The word life is the word zoe. Or the God way of living, the God kind of life. He's given us all things that pertain to life. And godliness. Paul said it, said it this way. He said, uh, uh, all things are mine. Well, that's true. All things are yours. All things are mine. Why? Because the book of Romans chapter 8 says, it says, uh, we are heirs of God. And what else? Journey heirs with Jesus Christ. Well, John 16, 13 says, when he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. Look what he said. And he will not speak of himself, but he will take the things of mine and he will show them unto you. Well, what does Jesus own? Everything. And he said the Holy Spirit's job is to show us everything. So I don't know where we get this idea that God's trying to hide stuff from us and he keeps it from us. No, 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 no. The Bible said there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed or hid that shall not be made known. And he's given us hidden riches of secret places. Which, which, which means what? He's going to reveal the sources. He's going to show us how to tap into, into a, a, a thing we've not known, wealth we've not even known about. And then too, why would God, why would God hide that when, when he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge? So he doesn't want to destroy it, so he, wanna, he, he wants to inform us about everything he has given. Look at what, what, what the Bible says. It is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Glory to God, hallelujah. Well, what's the use of having a kingdom if you don't know how to function? That's why the Bible said, for as many as are what? Led by what? The Spirit of God. Led by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Led by the Spirit of God. They are what? The sons of God. Well, a God is not behind you. A God is in front. See, where you lead me, I will. So the Holy Spirit's job is to lead us into everything God has given us. And the word said God has given us all things that pertain to life. Well, did not Jesus say in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10, he said, you know, that the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and what? To destroy. But I have come. For what purpose? That you might have what? Light and have it how? See, God wasn't just satisfied with you just having life. God's an over-the-top God, too much. Don't have enough room for it, God. That's why you can't think small if you really know God. And you got to get past who your mom and them were, well, Pookie, Rabbi, Bubba, and Sequita. That might have been your earthly roots, but now you got some heavenly roots. And the roots you have now have no limits. 
Look what the word says. If thou canst, what? Believe. How many things? But the key is I must what? Believe that it's what? Possible. God signed a blank check and said, now be, believe me for it and you can have it. Now, I always say this now, that's in line with the word. You can't be, be believing for somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. That's not in line with the word. That's wrong. That's sin. That's lust. Hallelujah. But whatever is in line with the word of God, God said the only thing that's keeping you from it is you believing me for it. And he said this, without faith, impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's the what? A reward of those who diligently what? seek him. Jesus said in the book of, of, of Luke chapter 18, and round, round about that 7, 8 verse, he said, when I come, will I find faith in the earth? Will I find people still that are persistent? Uh, I'm, I'm having my letters made up right, right now uh, to put it right across the top. Relentless faith. You have to have relentless faith to receive from God. How long? As long as it takes. You keep saying what? The same thing. Through faith and what else? Patience. You inherit the promises. Be not weary in what? Well doing. For what in due season you shall reap. If you don't faint, throw in a tire, quit, give up, and you'll never see it. But that woman wouldn't get an unjust judge, no rest. Jacob wouldn't turn that angel loose. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. See, how bad do you want it? And see, and see, what's important to you, you spend time on. You focus on. And God looks for faithfulness, commitment. Do you really want it? If you really want, you'll still be saying the same thing next week. And the week after that. They have attacked my sister here. This stupid stuff, this crazy stuff, just because she made a commitment. Boy, he came after. And we know it, we, we know it was, I told him from jump to give you a spiritual. And she went through all kind of batteries of tests, and they still haven't found nothing. But I told her this morning she needs to slow down because they're going to write her a ticket. Because <laughs> she's speeding up now. She's speeding up now. But now, look, look she's been saying the same thing through this whole process. This, this thing started last year. She said, when I get up to go to the bathroom, I'm still quoting the word. I'm saying the same thing all day long. But see, the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse, verse uh, 22 says, the word is life because I what? Found it. And it's what else? Health to all my flesh. Life is in the word. She said in John 63, he said, the words I speak, he said, uh, he said, the spirit quickeneth, but the words I speak, they are spirit and they are what? Life. John 1 said what? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Look what it says. And without the word, was nothing made. And in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, it says, and all things are being upheld by the power of his word. Yeah. Psalm said, his word is what? Forever. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It says also, it says, it says he magnifies his word above his name. He says in the book of Isaiah, he said, my word will not return unto me, boy. But the prophet thing what you said, and it will come to pass, just like I said it. You can't, you can't get no one ever spoke that won't come back, just like I said it. Just like he said it. Just like he said it. The centurion said what? Speak the word only. 
and my servant will be healed. Just speak the word. You ain't got to come to my house. Just speak the word. He said, and, and the book of Psalms says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all the destruction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your victory is in. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. That's why this ministry is all about the word. That's why I thank God we're not a, 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 a drama church. Because drama is distracting. We're here for the word only. Because that's what's going to keep you, set you free. Hello. Get you victory is the word. And the thing we're learning right now about this spiritual slice and the, and the role of the Holy Spirit, that God's, God has everything in heaven on hold right now. Just because of us, we're the only thing on God's mind right now. God stopped eternity and put time in the middle of it, and, and, and here we are. And he's given us time to get it right. Because he created us like himself. He said, I'm going to make man in my image and what? In my likeness. I'm going to put him in charge. And then, then, then when it's all over, they're going to rule and reign with me. Can you imagine a man ruling and reign with Almighty God himself? Glory to God. Hallelujah. How in the world can you have a small mentality with that kind of revelation? You know what God called us? A royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. A holy nation. Glory to God. That's why I can't, I can't think. Small. I can't think poverty. I can't think lack. I can't think less. I can't think defeat. Winning is the only thing that's on my mind. Because first of all, I'm blessed. And I'm highly favored. He encompassed me about with a shield of favor. Favor is all over me. No man can resist, resist me, not even my enemies. That's why I walk around like I own the world. I do. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm not making this up. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the scripture right. I read the book. That's how I got, that's how I got out of that gooch mentality. I come from nowhere. It's not even on the map. Not even a city. Not even a town. <laughs> Barely a village. Gooch by and Turkey Creek. <laughs> and look what the Lord has done. But see, we changed our stinking thinking. Because as a man thinketh in his what? Heart, so is he. You are what you think. You go, girl. You have to see yourself the way God sees you. That's, that's, that's part of the Holy Spirit's job, is to guide you into who you really are. When you came into Christ, you, you were like a brand new baby. You had you had no, you had you had you had no, no identity. The only thing you knew was that you were here now. And now the Holy Ghost is, is, is forming and shaping your mind to your new world. When a baby comes into the world, you give him a name. And you start telling him things about himself and what he can do and what he can't do. And you start letting him know about his roots, who his grand grandmother was, grandfather was, and all this kind of stuff. What you, are, you are informing him of who he already is. Well, when you come into Christ, you come into a whole brand, brand new world. You have no past now because if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creation. Old things are what? Passed away. And behold, all things are what? Brand new. So, 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 so you have no past. 
what, no, where you came from, who your mama and them were, don't matter. And you can't use that as an excuse not to go forward. I found a scripture. I don't know if you heard it or not. In Philippians, I can do all things through which that's why I made y'all get rid of if and can't. Those words don't work in the kingdom. I can do. I will do. I am doing. Because with God, with God with me, I got God with me now. I got the power of God in the person of the Holy Spirit living inside of my belly. Performing Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do. Exceeding. Abundantly. But what? All we can ask a thing according to what? The power that what? Work is where? You load it. You load it. It's not on liquor. You full of the Holy Ghost. He inside your belly with all his power. Bible said this. It said the same spirit that raised up Jesus. That's Romans 8. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in us. People of God, this thing is so rigged. That's why the devil's so mad with us. Because he, he knows he don't stand a chance. Once you come into knowledge, see, ignorance will kill you. Ignorance, ignorance will lay you up in the hospital and give you no hope. And you have all your confidence in a doctor that's guessing. They call it practice. And they make mistakes all the time. Talking with a young lady here recently. Last week, she said they was trying to put something, something in, and the person trying to put it in, they punctured her lung, and her lung collapsed. All they're going to say is, oops. But you the one got the collapsed lung. Now, the best way to be is get into the word of God and let it insulate you so you don't have to go to no hospital. I know a man from Galilee. If you ain't seen, he will set you free. <laughs> Glory to God. I know the healer, Christ the healer. He is the Lord that what? Healeth thee. I went to Exodus 23 and, and 25 and said, uh, 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 when I serve him, he'll bless my bread. He'll bless my water. And he will take sickness away from the midst of me. Watch this now. If it's not in the midst of me, it's no threat to me. That's why I said stay pure of fear. Because once you have knowledge, you don't be afraid of the stuff, stupid stuff the devil trying to throw at you, trying to intimidate you with a name. Try to use a name like cancer and scare you up. And God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But a power of love and what else? A sign of mind. Second Timothy 1 is that. He said, I've given you power over that. I don't care what name they give it, it's not greater than my word and the power of my spirit. Now let's talk about sin. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. I'm already excited. I've been hard on already. I just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just winding up. I love the word. See, 
I wouldn't be where I am right now if it hadn't been for the word of Almighty God. We, we, we wouldn't be sitting over here on these paid off uh, 20 acres if I didn't know the word of God. We wouldn't be walking in days of health. Years of health. I mean, just years of health. I mean, God has been good to us, man. Oh, Lord Jesus. We don't know what a cold is. Matter of fact, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Lord Jesus. It's been over 30 years since I had a cold. But see, I, I got into the Word. I used to have, you know, sinuses and allergies and stuff like this, you know. Any time pollen season come, come around, oh, it, it was on, man. I was a mess. But I started saying this Word. Every day, all day. He himself took my infirmities and bore my sickness. By stripes, I'm healed. He sent His Word and He healed me. His Word is life because I found it. It is health, all my flesh. He is the Lord that he lets me. He blessed my bread and blessed my water. He took sin away from the midst of me. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my death. The chastisement of my people. With the stripes, I am healed. I shall not die and declare the works. Oh, help me preach up in here. The Bible said that, you know, uh, uh, God called things, uh, Romans 4, verse 17, he said, God called things that be not as though they were. God always speaks the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46 and 10 says, God speaks the end from the beginning. He caught it like he wanted, not the way he had it. Say what you want, not what you have. Say what you want, not what you have. That's why we're in our home. I came in, I was bold. I came in and confessed it before you for four and a half years. Didn't I? Been there since 2008. Enjoying it. Every now and then I get, I get on that, on that uh, 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 elevator, just push the button, just go up to the second floor. <laughs> Hit the button, come on back, back down, just because I can do it. But, but, I, but I spoke that. Now I'm speaking my Holy Ghost rolls. Right. What have I got to lose? I'm driving a car in, in the meantime. Hello. That's what I want. The Lord is my shepherd. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he will do what? Give you what? The desires. Now I ain't heard need yet. He already told me in Philippians he supply all, all my needs, but he gave me my wants and my desires and my dreams. But I speak it out of my mouth. You can have whatever what you say. Let the redeemer of the Lord do what? Say so. If you don't say so, it will not show. You got to say what you want. Say what you want. And don't look at your present condition. The Bible says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. When his body was dead and Sarah's body was dead too. And the Bible says, who against hope believed in hope that God is going to do what he said. And just like God said, it happened. Oh, glory to God. I don't preach me happy. I don't got a word. If you ain't got nothing, I praise the Lord. I preach to me today, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> In case you didn't know, I serve a miracle working God. I was asking a young lady about a, a, a young man that was on a ventilator. And uh, they came in the prayer line for him. And she said, when we got back, they had taken him off the ventilator. So while they were here in prayer, God was 
over there working a miracle. Hallelujah. And that girl, she went to the gym, huh? <laughs> that daughter, remember last Sunday? I prayed for her. She went to the gym Monday. Worked out. Been going strong ever since. Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question. Is anything? Now that one verse said, it is a light thing for him. God said, you're not even, you're not even putting no, you, you're not even putting put no pressure on my power with the stuff you got going on. That's a drop in the bucket. I do that just sneezing. Because it's easy, easy. Because I'm God. And besides me, there is no other God. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Wilson. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, he's my God. And my God can do anything, even if it takes a miracle. The miraculous is the number one. Assume that's what he do. That's how he rolls. That's, that's his place in the space. He does what he does because who? he is who he is. Let's talk about sin. I, I keep getting pulled here. I keep getting pulled. I keep getting pulled. But let's talk about sin. Galatians 5. And... Uh, I want you to go with me to the, I think it's around the 16th or 17th verse here. Let me find out for sure. Man, I'm just, I'm happy in the word. Yeah. 16th verse, Galatians 5. This I say then, walk in the what? Capital S. Capital S, that's critical. Capital S. Walk in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, just for a moment, drop down to the 25th verse. Twenty-fifth verse. If we live, huh? In the spirit. Do we live in the spirit? Yes. Why? Because you wouldn't have no life without the Holy Spirit. He is the giver of life. He's the one that's sustaining our life, even as we speak. Nothing lives without the Holy Ghost. When Mary was approached by, by Gabriel and, and told that, that she would bear, the, bear, bear a son, and then, then would be, be called Jesus, and she said, you know, Without the aid of a man, and she asked a very legitimate question. How can this be? Being I do not know a man. And he said this, the Holy Ghost shall what? Overshadow you. The Holy Spirit is the doer of every word God ever spoke. Jesus once said in the beginning, was, in the beginning God, God created what? The heaven and the earth. Verse 2 said the earth was without form and void over the face of the deep. But then it said, and the Spirit of God was moving or brooding over the water. The Spirit of God was waiting for a word. The Holy Spirit does every word God ever speaks. He is the power of God's words. You don't get nothing without the Holy Ghost. So you live by or as a result of the Holy Spirit. We are living right now by or according to or as a result of the Holy Spirit. So he said this, since we, since, 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 since we are having to live by him anyway, why not let him lead us? Look what's that now. If we live in the spirit, let us also do what? Walk in the spirit. Walk or let him control or lead us, direct us. Why? Because we have no knowledge of the spirit. Everything we know in this world, uh, we got it by uh, uh, experimentation, most of it, word of mouth, right? But see, when you come into the realm of the Spirit, you know 
by revelation the things of the kingdom. We do what? The Holy Spirit just causes you to know. You probably hadn't even read a book or nothing. He drops it down in your spirit. You just know. And the Bible said, Paul said, I count everything as what? Nothing that I might do what? Know him. See, it, you want to know him in the power of his spirit. You want to know God. And the way you know him is by the one who's tattletaling. And that's the Holy Ghost. He said, he said look at what it said in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, the spirit searches all things. That's verse, that's verse 10 and, and verse 11. The spirit searches all things and yea, the deep things of God. For what purpose? To show them unto us. Look what it said. For what man knoweth the things of man except what? The spirit of that man. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. The spirit of God knows everything about God, and God put him inside of us to reveal God to us. So I know God by the Holy Ghost. But look, people, God, I know him in my spirit. The head got issues. First of all, the devil have no access to our spirit unless we invite him in. So if you want, if, if there's one pure place in you, and that's your spirit. And the Holy Spirit set up residence inside your pure spirit. So anytime you want to know whether it's God or not, listen here first. Because see, the devil got access to your head. Trust me. That's why the Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter, 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 chapter 10 and verse 4, casting down all what? Imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. Anything that's contradicting the word of God, you pull that thing down. But what, but what does those thoughts come? Into our mind. So, 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 so now we're back to what? Romans 12 and 2. Well, 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body, what? A living sacrifice, holy and accept unto God, which is what? Your reasonable servant. Now, verse 2, and be not what? Conformed to what? This world, but be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Which means what? Your mind needs some help. Because your mind can think bad at times. And think some crazy stuff. Can I get a witness? So this mind has to be trained about spiritual things. This mind has to be trained about spiritual things. But here's the, here's the key. If, it's, if it has to be renewed, that means at one time it did know. Before the fall. You know right now we're only using 10% of our brain. That means we've got 90% just sitting there. Well, you know, God don't make nothing for, for, for nothing. It had to be a purpose for it. Well, who, who do you think named all the animals? Adam did, not God. The, the Bible said God brought them to Adam to see what he would name them. He just passed before Adam. Adam gave him the name. Cow, chicken, you know, dog, cat, you know, zebra, rat, roach, <laughs> mosquito. Why did God have confidence that his man had that kind of ability? Because at that time, man was not limited. Sin limits you. Righteousness releases you. Sin limits you. Righteousness releases you. It frees you up. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you what? Free. And watch this now. When I, when I was reading this verse, the Lord said to me, he said, son, if they do this verse, the 16th verse, the 16th verse right here in Galatians 5, sin is taken out of the equation. I said, what? He said, yes. 
He said, if, if, if they will walk in the spirit, they will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And if you go down to verse, I think it's either verse 18 or verse 19, it says, and the man that walks in the spirit, there is no law against him. The one that's been led by, by the spirit, there are no law against you. The only, the only purpose for a law is for, for disobedient people. People that are doing right don't need a law. Who is Popo for? <laughs> People that drive in little red cars. <laughs> oh, I said, how you doing, girl? <laughs> Speeding up down the highway. <laughs> A man that's driving the speed limit could care less how, how many police are on the, on the road. Because why? The law does not apply to them because they are obeying. They're doing what is what? Right. So God's law is for those that will what? Disobey. Here's the key. I want to ask you this. If I'm, what's the word I've been using? Mirroring. If I'm mirroring the Holy Spirit, obeying the instruction verbatim, what door is open for sin. There is none. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to lead you into sin. He's only going to lead you into that which is what? Right. Which, which means what now? If, you, if, if, if you're doing everything the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, you are in the, the perfect will of God. And sin is no threat to you because you have made a decision, I'm going to obey the Holy Spirit's instructions. Now, is there a war going on? Yes, there's a war going on. Because your flesh is still trying to have a say-so. And the Bible says that the Spirit and the flesh at war. Uh, Romans 8 and verse, verse 7 says that uh, the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to God and can't be subject to God because it's a godless mindset. So the flesh is warring against the spirit and the spirit is warring against the flesh. And, the, and, and God said, if, if you will let the spirit of God lead you, you will never succumb to what the flesh is trying to, trying to pull you into. Your flesh said, lie. <laughs> Spirit of God said, don't lie. So then, because see, God will not take away from you the power of choice. You'll never do it. We all have, a, have what? A free will. He said in the book of, 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 of Deut 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 Deuteronomy, he said, I put before you what? Life and death, good and evil. But you have to make the decision. But he said, but here's a hint. Choose good. But I can't make the decision for you. So when, 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 when the war is going on between the flesh and, 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 the, and the spirit, you should have to make a decision. Are you going to follow your flesh or follow the spirit? When your flesh said, cuss them out. <laughs> oh, come on, saints. Come on, saints. Who you been yielding to? Come on, talk to me. Because the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 6, it says, to, who, to whomever you yield your members to, that's whose servant you are. Somebody that vex you, oh, man, cuss them out. Because of no, pray for them. Oh, no, I ain't praying. I got some other tongues for them. <laughs> Don't shout me down because I'm preaching real, real good. Oh, it's not easy, yeah. Yeah, we got to thing my brother. Yeah. What that thing at, man? Yeah. Who you yield to? 
Somebody hit you. Oh, look at those sounds going through that. Now the Bible says that was written by the Holy Spirit through his secretaries. Remember what the Bible said? The, 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 the Bible said these men wrote as they were inspired of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost had many secretaries. Moses, Paul, Luke, he was his secretary. And the Bible said these men wrote this. So the Holy Ghost wrote that part about that said if they hit you on one cheek, Oh, throw that one up there. He didn't say draw back. Where he leads me, I will follow. A, a, a saint, you can't pick and choose when to be led. If you're going to live in the will of God. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, if I'm mirroring the Holy Spirit and I want to be in God's, in the perfect will of God, then whatever he tells me to do, that's what I'm doing. Now, here's, here's the thing. Sosta, sosta. Ephesians 6, and, 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 and I think it's very, verse 10 says, uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of whose might. See, you don't, even have to, you, you, you don't even have to use your own strength. He just needs to know you're willing. And he has applied the strength. What he told Paul, my grace, and grace is not just favor, it's ability also. You need ability. He said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. You can handle this. But see, he had, to, he, had, he had to make a decision towards God. See, everything the Holy Spirit bring you and, that the, and, and your flesh bringing you, you got to make a decision. When you choose the Holy Spirit, the power is there to carry it out. And it's not your power. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. I, not by might, nor by power, but by my whom? By my spirit. See, the spirit of God comes packing. Got everything you need. There's a couple of verses in that same chapter. Uh, we make we get a chance to read today. Uh, that start, it starts naming all the products of the flesh life. It mentions jealousy, envy. Uh, sexual sins, immorality. Uh, it mentions uh, selfish ambitions. It mentions wrath. You're going to you, you, get them? See, if the Holy Ghost is leading you, you ain't getting nobody. People try to punish people. No, the Bible said, you know, uh, 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 love beareth all things, believeth all things, Endo is all thing. Come on. And what love. And, and remember now, what is, what, is, what is one of the first manifestations of the capital S spirit of, in your life in, 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 the, in the list of fruits? Love. That word love is the word what? Agape. Unconditional, benevolent love that doesn't matter what anybody else does to me. I'm going to still love you in spite of yourself. I'm going to treat you right, though you treat me wrong 365 days a year. I'm not going to try to get you back. I'm not going to try to punish you because I'm mad at you. You offended me. I'll show you. That's flesh. That ain't the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says a person that's walked in the spirit, that person will pray for their enemies. They'll bless them. You didn't even give them water and food. Oh, don't get quiet on me now. You were with me a little while ago. See, when you're walking in the spirit, you don't have an agenda. 
and you won't let somebody give you one. Well, they passed by me and didn't speak to me. So, speak to yourself. <laughs> Look in the mirror and say, how are you? <laughs> we get bit all out of shape about little old bitty things. It just don't mean nothing. Talks about partying spirits in that, those two, two verses. I think it's 19 through, 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 the, through the 21st verse right there, right? Yeah, it names a whole bit. And read it in, in, the, in the New Living Translation. You can understand it better because some of the words they're using the King James, he said, what is that? Look at the New Living Translation and, 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 and read it, and it spells them out. Everything from amb ambitious uh, 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 motives, selfishness, envy, hatred, and, and, and the, end of, in the end of it says this, those that's doing these things, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. That kind of stuff will keep you out. God can't have no haters up, up in heaven. You say, but I don't hate God, but if you hate one of his people, just like hating him. Because the word said, if you do it to, to one of the least of these, my brother, you're doing it unto me. How you can say you can love me and hate somebody made in my image, in my likeness? I can't stand them. You better stand something. You, ain't got, you, you, you don't have to have to go home with them, but you got to love them. You got to pray for them. You got to treat them right. And, 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 and you can have no long-term agenda to get somebody back. Will y'all please stop running around the church? <laughs> See, when love is leading, he's going to lead you on to that, which is what? Right. And I made a commitment. I said, I said, I said this. I will obey the Holy Spirit's instructions every time. Every time. Every time. And trust me, I've had some marvelous opportunities to go street. <laughs> but my big concern is I don't want to misrepresent my God. That's what got Moses fired. He didn't have control of his anger, his temple. And the one, one uh, the new, new, new living translation says, "Burst of anger." He said, "That's the flesh." If you've been led by the Spirit, you don't have those. If they manifest, you you squash them. Because see, the thing the thing that the Spirit of God producing you is love. Go then read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and start in verse 4 and read on down. It lists all the things that, that the kind of love he's talking about there. Love suffers long, it's kind. Hello? Uh, be, believe it all things. Love, love put up with a whole lot. Love not puffed up. Doesn't a, a, you know, vaunt itself or exalt itself. That's one of the things in, in, in that passage too is, is self-exaltation. It's called pride. And thinking, and thinking that everybody else is wrong except all the ones, except, uh, except the ones that's in your, your, your little old group. That's in there too. Love don't have an agenda. It just want to bless. Love gives. Love doesn't punish. Love covers. Oh, Lord, you. love covers what? A multitude. Of faults and sin. Love doesn't expose and, 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 uh, and, and put somebody's faults on blast. Get what I found out about so and so. Now, love covers it. He just prays. Lord, change him. Change him, Lord. Put Philippians 2 13 in their hearts, oh God, to the desire and the ability to change. 
Love doesn't put their sins on blast. They tried that with Jesus, something brought that woman to him, something, look, we, we caught this woman in, in, in adultery. They were putting her sins on, on, on blast. He got on, he got left on the ground, just started writing, and, and, and then he looked up later on and said, took the woman and said, well, where art, where art thou accusers? She said, well, they're all gone. He said, well, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. One of, one of Noah's son's sons exposed his sin. Remember he got drunk and was laying there naked? And then one son came out, Ham, that was his name, came out and started and put his father's sins on blast. Other two sons came in and backed up to their father with a cover and covered their father's sin without looking, look, covered his Bible without looking on his nakedness. That's what love does. Love doesn't, love doesn't want to see anybody hurt. And just because you might be in a sin for a moment, that doesn't, doesn't mean that God can't change it. But then you've already sown seeds of bad images in the minds of others because you put their sins on blast. Slow them down, Lord. They're just running all around the church now. Good Lord, have mercy. See, so it, the, the Spirit of God is all, always going to lead you into that which builds and not condemns. There is therefore now what? No condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1, who walk, now here we go again now, who walk not what? After the flesh, but after who? The Spirit. So if, I, so if I'm walking after the Spirit, I will always be in a place where I won't ever have to encounter condemnation. Because he's never going to lead me into sin. I'll always be led into righteousness and that which is right. And I'll always be in the perfect center of God's will. If I walk after the spirit. He says, since you've since, since you got to live in him, since, since you're living in him, in, him, in him anyway, let him run your life. Let him help you. When they misuse you and abuse you. And you were right. Let me help you. Just because you were right don't mean you have to win the fight. That's a good marriage tip right there. <laughs> let me just chuck that one. Let, let me just chuck that one in there. Just because you're right doesn't mean you have to win the fight. The bottom line is about peace. The Lord knows who was right and who, who was wrong. You are about peace. Well, I know I was right. He was just as wrong as two left you. And I let him have it too. All by myself. Praise him. <laughs> I tell all my couples I counsel in my first session, choose your brand of cheese because you will eat plenty of cheese if the marriage is going to last. Hallelujah. American blue cheese, just choose your <laughs> just choose. Choose your flavor. Just because you're right don't mean you have to win the fight. God knows how to convict a person when, when, when they are wrong. Hallelujah. If I hold my peace, let the Lord, victory shall be mine. Hallelujah. I feel so loved. <laughs> oh, man. Praise the Lord. So how do I take sin out of the equation? I follow the Spirit. I walk after him. He'll never leave me wrong. Ever. I'll always be right in the center of God's will, 
which set me up, which, 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 which does not. It sets me up for blessings. God blesses righteousness. So if I'm following the Holy Spirit, I'm doing that which is right. So God has the right to bless me. So I monitor myself constantly. I monitor my attitudes. I monitor any ill feelings that might come up in me from, for somebody or towards somebody. And I get rid of that quick. I got too much on the line to let somebody or something trip me up and get me stuck like Chuck. I'm not going out like that. Ain't nobody that important. Uh-uh. No, I'll lose you and let you go. I love you. I love you. You love me. That's where it's got to be. And the Holy Spirit is only going to lead you into love. What kind of love? Unconditional. If I was feeding my wife today and she, she you know, kicked me off or something, I'm still going to feed her tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not just going <laughs> to. You know, something, something, something. I'm, yeah. I ain't cooking nothing. No more. Let them eat the best way they can. I ain't stutting them. You can't do that. You in sin. You're in flat out sin. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not the Spirit of God. Here's what the Spirit of God is. The sun shines on the just and the, the rain falls on the just and the. That's why when, when, when my wife and I have a, a, a disagreement, we never stop doing what we was doing before we disagreed, ever, in almost 40 years of marriage. That's been our pattern. And we never stopped praying together every night. We pray together every night. I don't care how late it is, we pray together. We're doing that all of our marriage. And then we have a prayer that, that, that we pray over our marriage. I don't care how, you know, perfect you are, there's still room for perfection. Especially in marriage, because you, you got two different personalities. Two different wheels involved here. And they got to blend so we don't sin. So, so we don't use ourselves as a weapon against the other. We walk in love. We never stop hugging. Even, even when we disagree, we never stop, stop hugging. We, we, we hug each other every day. The moment our feet hit the floor, we walk around, walk around to her side of the bed, and we hug each other. That's every day. That's every day. Every day. When the last time you hug your your spouse. <laughs> well, get quiet in there now. I ain't stutting him. <laughs> but see, what happened is you open the door because somebody hug it. And they're hugging with intentions. And you be trying to go home and Josephine got your man and gone. <laughs> Jesus. 
Love heals. And the Spirit of God will lead you right into love. And when you follow this instruction, and your mind might be battling you, I mean, fighting you hard. So you ain't going to do that. You, you, you are justified in what you're doing. The Spirit of God said, but no, that's not how I would do it. You love them. Here's how I got saved from this verse. With loving kindness have I drawn them. God got me because he was being so good to me, I felt guilty not serving him. His goodness drew me to him. Not his wrath, not threatening me. He was just so good. I couldn't turn for, for God's favor. I've been having favor all, all my life for a long time. God loved me into the kingdom. If you walk in love, I'm telling you, watch how things just start working for you. Stop making excuses for being mean. Love. Love. What's love got to do with it? Every now and then I get on one of them trains, you know, that love train. People all over the world join in. Get on the love train. Love train. How do I take sin out of the equation? I follow the Holy Spirit. Then it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing, and the law doesn't matter because there's no law against righteousness. It's only against sin. Have I helped you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Would you stand, please? Hallelujah. I've been helped. I feel the love up in here just oozing out of you. Now, understand this now. You probably, you could probably go on your job tomorrow and somebody will test you. But you're being what? Led by the Spirit, right? Hallelujah. And you're going to pray for them and love them. I don't care if y'all acting like a jack. You're going to love them. Kindness will change a man's heart quicker than you're trying to punish them. It's just nice to be nice. People will remember nice people. They remember nasty people too. They're not planning nothing good for you when, you when you're nasty. But see, doors of favor open when you're nice to people. Just open, just open. My wife and I walk in there all the time. Our daughter too. Yeah, it's just nice to be, be nice. Anybody need prayer today? Anybody not born again? Not sure about it? Or in a backslidden condition? You're not going to find nowhere in the Bible that said the devil has, has horns and a pitchfork. Not in the Bible. It does say he's able to transform himself into an angel of light where he looks just like the real thing, tall like one of us, look like this one of us. I mean, the devil is an is a, 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 a imitating saint. But his agenda is devilish. It's to trick you and trap you and pull you away from from God. And then once he gets you out there, he drops drop you like a hot potato. And then shame and pride keep, keep you from coming back. Don't let him play you like that. In the kingdom, every tub got to sit on his own bottom. Ain't no proxy thing in, in, in the kingdom. But if you're not born again, if you're out of fellowship with the Lord, maybe there's out of baptism in the Holy Spirit. Power comes. The Bible says, the Spirit, when he the Spirit, Spirit come up upon you, his power comes upon you. And they receive power after that the Holy Ghost came what? Upon them. Power's there. You need it in your life. Then he gives you language. It's part of the package. You can confess it with the Father from your spirit. Bible says when you pray in tongues, your spirit prayeth. It bypasses your head. Your spirit gets a chance to talk to God. Because your spirit has, has a limitless ability. Your mind is limited by what, you have, what you've learned or have, or have experienced. 
Your spirit just knows God. Maybe you, you need a church home. You've been checking us out. It's a good church. That's all I can say about it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. And we have sustained, been sustained, going on 29 years now. God's still sustaining us. God been present when you to be part of the house. We love to have you, praise God. Love to have you. Got that hallelujah down there. That's what I'm talking about, cheering. That's right. Yeah, train them early. That's the highest praise right there. Maybe you just need prayer. You got something going on. You've been standing and believing, but you want um, agreement. Also, I also made this available. I said also, and the, and the people God have, have been taking advantage of it. If, if the Lord dealt with me several weeks ago, he said, now invite them to bring handkerchiefs and lay them on, 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 on your body and get them back to them. And when they apply that handkerchief to the, to the, the, the desired person or, or, or situation, I release that power and I work a miracle for them. Just like Acts 19 said, Paul laid handkerchiefs and aprons on his body, and then he brought them to the sick and to the, 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 those that were bound with devil, and it, said it drove out the diseases and it drove out devils from a piece of cloth, but it had been what? Empowered by the Holy Ghost. I know it worked because I'm getting praise reports back already that it's been working. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not about me. I'm, 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 I'm just a vessel. God, just, uh, God is using me. And he said, now, now, now let the people use you too. So I, I, I just get used. But God takes care of me because I'm being used. If you're here today and you, you need, if you're not born again, or you're out of faith with the Lord, the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need, need a church home or just need prayer, in Jesus' name, come now. Anybody pray? We, we want to minister to you right now. This is your time. This is your time. Praise God, praise God. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. I was wondering when, when you were coming. Glory to God. You've been holding, holding that longer that, than you had to, girl. It's your day to get healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see you have a stack. <laughs> You're smart, huh? <laughs> You're smart, huh? Hallelujah. I thought I'd lay my, these handkerchiefs are on my body in according to Acts 19, where Paul laid handkerchiefs on his body and they were brought to the sick. And disease was driven out as well as evil spirits, oh God. And I release that anointing that's, re that's resident in and, and upon my life. You gave it to me, oh God. So now I release that anointing in, into these claws. And as they are applied to the intended target, oh God, may they experience the miracle they need. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will travel with these handkerchiefs. And when they meet that destination, reach that, that you will release that power and work a miracle on their behalf. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All right, my sister. There you go. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Oh, you got yourself one, my sister. All right. Uh-huh. Well, good thing for that, 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 that you have, have friends, huh? Yeah. Any of those hankers in, in this line while, I'm, is it all right? while I lay my hands upon these hankers, I release the power of God in them as they lay up upon my body, called Acts 19, oh God. And may they contain your power, may be released when they reach their destination. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the power of God and you're resident now in up, up, up on my life and it's been released now into, into this cloth. Was applied, they shall experience the miraculous supernatural power of God. 
work a miracle for her, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. There you are, my sister. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's yours. That's yours. That's yours. And these old knees got to stop giving you problems. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's time for it to be, 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 be over forever. Yeah, forever. I release forever upon these knees in Jesus' name. Not another problem. Not another problem. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let your healing power be manifest in her knees. She'll run like a gazelle, leap over a tall building in a single bound. Be healed in Jesus' name. All right, mama. Bless you, girl. Yes, ma'am. That, huh? You, you ready for it to go? In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the power of God upon her, and I command the spirit of infirmity. You take your hands off of her, and I rebuke these migraines. You stop it, you quit it, and you leave her right now. All the pain. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you leave her right now, and you will not return. You will not return. You will not return. You will leave right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be made whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus, all pain go. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Was it hurt when you came, came up? What is doing now? Subsiding, huh? But my hand not gonna leave until it's all gone. It's got to all go. My God's the God of all. He's the God of all. He's the God of all. Whole body wholeness. All of it. You you heard me. And you will obey me in Jesus' name. You tell me when it's all gone. Rest in no stress. Rest in no stress. Rest in no stress. All gone. I'm assuming there must be some indicators going on here. Yeah. Uh huh. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming then. All gone? Well, praise the Lord then. All gone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And not coming back either. What's up, girl? Let the power of God set 
set me free. Holy Spirit, move in our midst. Holy Spirit, break the bondages. Holy Spirit, let the anointing flow and let Holy, Holy Spirit, let the anointing let the and let the power, let the power of God send me. Set me free. Somebody give God a praise up in here. You know he's good. It's time to give. The money? All these rich folk. Money magnets. Distribution centers. Don't know what broke is. Hallelujah. I want to go back to the book of, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. I wish it was an aisle. They, they will assist you in the preparation of, of your gifts. I need to go back to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 29 again. Powerful passage. The whole chapter is powerful because it talks about a man that loved God. But not only did he love God, he loved God's work. He loved what they were about to do, and that was build God a house. And it says that uh, he set his affections on God's house. He said his affection. So you have to love God first and then love what he's doing. Else you won't, you won't give to it. And God looks at your ability to, to release along with your, your words saying that you love him. Because if you love, you're going to give. See, a man that doesn't tithe, uh, God has a question about you loving him. Because that doesn't depict love if you hold him what's his. And one thing I don't want in my possession is what belongs to him. And the tithe belongs to God. Hello, somebody. That's just the way it is. He, he said in, in Leviticus, he said, it's mine. That's all, that's all I need to hear. And he said, if you hold on to my stuff, I, I got a problem with that. And what I do is I step back from you. And I look for a reason to destroy you. That's what a curse is. So I say, if, 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 if he's that adamant about it, I don't need, need that kind of pressure on me. It's hard enough as it is. Then have God against you too? Oh, no. No, Lord, I give you a dime on, on every dollar. Matter of fact, more than a dime. And... David, 
His son Saul was about to build God a house because God would let David build it because David was a warrior. And he, he said, you, you, your hands are full of blood. And then David had also had that woman husband killed. That's the blood he was talking about. He took another man's wife and then had the man killed. So, 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 so God said, you can't build me no, no house. Your hands are bloody. So he gave him a son from that relationship, Solomon, man of peace. He was a young, young man, didn't have a lot of wisdom and knowledge at that time. He was very young. But David had, was, had been preparing for a while, collecting to build God this house, this mansion, this temple. It was immaculate, too. I mean, I mean, he put some stuff, he put, you know, diamonds and emeralds and all kind of awesome stones in this place. Everything was laid, layered with gold. Because David felt like nothing was too good for his God. But, he, but these words stuck. He said, I set my affection on God's house. And I prepared with all of my might or with everything that I have. And then what he said, he went on down to, that, to, to the next verse and he said, and then I went to my own private stash. I had a treasury. And I went to my own private treasure, and I pulled out all that. And he lists all the things that, that, that he gave. It was, it, it was to the billions. They was a wealthy man. I mean, he was seriously wealthy. You put it in, 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 in today's modern uh, 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 dollars and stuff, he was, he was a wealthy man. He brought that out of the treasure and said, I'm giving you this too. But first things first, he had to love God. Then he loved God's work. And when you love God, when you love God and love his work, nobody have to pump you to give. It's a privilege to give. I can't wait to give. But then he can't wait to give to me. You mean what I said now? God does what we do. You gotta go to over there some a, a, a time and, and read, you know, James four and, and eight. You know, James four seven said, "Resist the devil, submit yourself to the devil, to God, resist the devil." But verse eight said, "Draw nigh to God, and then He'll draw nigh to you." Look, He ain't drawing till you draw. When you come near to Him, then He come near to you. God does what you do. So when He see you wanting to bless His work, then He start trying to then He then He want to bless your work. Whatever you set your hands to. But it starts out, God make it, God make it so that you got to move first. And when you move first, then he moves. And when you set your affection on, on God's house, we're, we're in the process of, what, of paying this building off. We got it down to about $400,000 now. $400,000. But now we also sing this song. Pay off God's house. The money just keep on coming. For what purpose? You didn't say go shopping. Well, I'm waiting for the lump sum. But no, you can give every week something. What if everybody gave something every week? And I'm, talking about, I'm not, not talking about from taking from, from what you're already giving and just swap it out. I'm talking about in addition to. See, David added to what he was already giving. Hello, somebody. And then you can really sing that song. Don't wait for the lump. Break up a piece right, right now and give now something. It all adds up. And then you can really, the money just keeps on coming. The pay off, pay off God. Why? Because you gave something. And it just keeps coming to give more, keep coming to give more, keep coming to give more. One thing you have to learn about God, there really are not a lot of lumps. It comes con continuously. You look back at the end of the year and you, and you, you go, 
Wow. Where did all that money come from? Look at all the things I did. And it sure wasn't just my check because I didn't have to do all that. It was God just coming in, showing me in, showing up, showing up, showing up. Well, if you do that with him, he'll do that with you. Amen? Amen. So what, 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 what I must do first? Love God. And then what? Love his work. And when I do those things, I love giving. You see that? Then bring it in the house. There it is. Yeah. Yes, sir. I believe. I believe. Pay off. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. The money. I receive. I receive. The money, 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 money. I receive. I receive. To be I receive. I receive. I receive. We can do this. Pay all. Pay all. I receive. I was yeah. Pay hey, all God's house. The money just keep on coming. To pay all. I receive. The money, money, money. I receive. Money, money. Just keep I receive. I receive. Pay all God's house. I receive. I receive. We can do this. I receive. Huh? I receive. <laughs> I receive <laughs> the money. Pay all the money, 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 money. Pay Well, y'all singing now. <laughs> now, Father, we lift these gifts of love to you in great appreciation and gratitude. Thank you for the honor and the privilege to give into the kingdom, oh God. To give back to you a part of what you blessed us with. All that we have came from you anyway. So it's our privilege to give back to you, oh God. And say thank you for all that we receive, oh God. Thank you for your high priest right now offering our gifts to you. Lord, receive them. They are gifts of love. Now, Lord, you said in your word, you would open up the ones of heaven, you pour out a blessing. We would not have room enough to receive it. Lord, let it rain, oh God. Let it pour out blessings upon us, oh God. Let divine favor be on our lives, oh God. Everything paid for in full, oh God. The money just keep on coming in Jesus' name. All who agree, said. And when they gave their praise. Oh, right now. God, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Well, it's been good. I was helped.